Lovely. Wait, so, so let me just re remind myself one more time. 20% of global wastewater and 10% of global waste emissions. Okay. I do look down. I mean, if you need to. Um, so, Laura, how would you describe the, the current situation in terms of sustainability in the fashion industry? It's not good news, is it? No, fashion's a massive polluter. According to the UN, it's responsible for 20% of global wastewater and 10% of global waste emissions. Um, it's, it's clear that something really needs to be done, and quickly, but it's a huge, complicated, mammoth issue to address. And the carbon footprint for the whole supply chain is pretty horrendous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's not just the clothes as well. It's all the packaging and then sending those clothes from where they've been made to where they're going to be sold to who's going to buy them. It's a massive... Um, yeah, sorry. No, that's perfect. That absolutely is that on. enough? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And, and not to mention the terrible conditions in factories on the other side of the world, places like Bangladesh. That's a really important point because I think that we can sometimes think of sustainability as just what something's made of, but it's also how it's made, where it's made, and who it's made by. You have to think about the human impact as well. That's really, really important. Um, consumers in the UK are also sending a huge amount to landfill, aren't they? I mean, it's I suppose 235 million items a year. It's absolutely shocking. How can we stop people doing that? I would urge anyone who wanted to shop more sustainably to only buy something that they absolutely love. It, in some ways, let me go back on that because I was going to say in some ways it doesn't really matter what it's made of. Okay. But it does matter. But my point is, even if you buy something cheap, just wear it to death. <laughs> OK. Um, that will come up again. People in the UK, particularly here, less so in Europe, they're addicted to fast fashion. Um, so how do we discourage people from buying the five pound dress, the one pound bikini? I think we have to change the narrative around it. I don't think we should be offered um, those products in the first place. I do really believe that if something costs one pound, a t-shirt costs three pounds, somewhere, someone somewhere has paid the price for that somewhere along the supply chain. Did I say somewhere too much? Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, what was the question, sorry? Um, just about fast fashion, how we can discourage people from these the really cheap clothes. I think we have to change the whole narrative around it. I don't think we should expect to be able to get things that cheaply. I don't blame people that buy those pieces. Um, it's just that it's become a cultural phenomenon, this lightning fast fashion. Um, sorry. And there's very much a, it's very much a case of almost wear something once and then expect to throw it away because it's so cheap. It's the price of a sandwich. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the, for me, the fundamental golden rule that everyone can take away is only buy things that you absolutely love and you are going to wear them until they fall apart. Do you think fast fashion is mostly to blame for the problem or are high-end brands just as bad? I think that um, there can be a kind of almost snobbery around sustainability, that it's the posturing of the smug middle classes. But actually, yes, high-end brands can be problematic in their own way. There's been lots of calling out of those brands about burning stock, for instance. Um, sorry, I can't always go like... <laughs> no, no, that's that fine. Okay? Um, tw 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 I was going to say something else and then I lost my train of thought. No, it's, okay. it's not a high-low issue. Um, there's slightly different problems at both ends of the scale, but this really needs to be addressed in a completely holistic way by the entire fashion industry. Do you think some of the high-end retailers should follow the example of, say, Stella McCartney, who's making strides, she's doing all she can with, what she, you know, with how she's working at the moment? I absolutely think that the big brands, whether they're high-end or high-street, should be using their platform to address this and quickly um, brands like uh, sorry brands like the Danish brand Ghani are endeavoring to make themselves carbon neutral for instance and they're a huge influential brand <laughs> sorry 
Do you think um, fashion retailers then should be taking responsibility for the, the clothes that they sell? Um, Can they get a bottle? Um, actually, I have a bottle right there. I'm not, I'm not that. Oh, it's okay. Uh, sorry, what was the question? It was whether whether you think fashion retailers should take more responsibility or take any responsibility for the clothes that they sell. For example, the Environmental Audit Committee was requesting a 1p tax on each item of clothing for a recycling scheme. I absolutely think that if you want to manufacture and sell clothes, you have to be engaging with this dialogue. I think it's what people want as well. There's a real appetite for clothes that are more conscious, more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, produced more ethically. That's what people want and it's the responsibility of the brands to give it to them as much as it is the responsibility of the customer. And do you buy into the, those recent policy announcements from retail giants like Inditex, uh, the owner of Zara, about sustainability or do you think that's greenwashing? I can't say too much about Specific, specific brand, okay. uh, only because of advertisers, but I could say something like... Call them retail giants. <laughs> <laughs> or just fast fashion. You know. um, I think that brands have to be completely transparent. Uh, the customer is demanding that. They want to know, and that they should be giving them that information. However, I do think we should be celebrating progress over... Per per the uh, however, I do think we should be celebrating progress over perfection. Every step that we're making in the right direction is doing exactly that. Yes, perhaps we need to speed up a bit, and I absolutely don't think people should be sold dishonest information, but we should think about when steps are being made in the right direction. A bit repetitive, sorry. No, it's fine. And a lot of those fast fashion retailers say that they're not being led by government policy, they're not being forced, they're just being influenced by public opinion, which is, is changing, but it's slow, isn't it? Uh, sorry, what, ha how, what do you mean, sorry? That I was thinking about Inditex, but without mm. naming them. They said that they're not being forced to make all the changes that they're making, they just recognise that something needs to be done. So they're sort of sticking their head above the parapet and volunteering, you know, aren't we great? But it's like, how much of that you believe? <laughs> mm. But is the do you is it that you think the government are you asking if the government needs to be doing something? Yeah, I was going to come back to that actually. Don't worry. Are you sure? Um, Sorry, I'm being. It's not. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Have you um, have you encountered any sort of young designers who are doing anything innovative, to um, you know, in terms of techniques or materials, to become more sustainable? Yes, but can you give me a moment because yeah. I don't want to forget anyone. So Richard Malone's a really, really good one. Mm. Um, Mother of Pearl, I guess that counts as a young designer. Mm. Mm. So I don't mean literally young. It's sort of, you know, newish rather than an established, you know, sort. We met a woman called Zoe Corsellis who, who's using Econil, mm. you know, the recyclable nylon. Right, so you have all the stuff about Econil and Tencel and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that we yeah we've got a show from Barcelona which was all recycled fishing nets, and this this designer in London Zoe who who showed us some of her things which are made out of all sorts of wood pulp and you know yeah amazing bamboo. yeah, um, yeah. So no, I just wondered if there was anyone like that that you'd like to you know yeah, but I feel like Richard to. Malone really deserves a shout out because he's really interesting mm. and mother of pearl. But I'm just struggling to think off the top of my head of things. No, that's okay. But I can give you an answer about them if you want yes please yeah um so you've met or you've encountered some um newish um young designers who are using innovative techniques and fabrics and things to become more sustainable yeah i definitely think that um the the emerging designers and the the less established names are making this integral to what they do um, designers like Richard Malone, who shows in London, and Mother of Pearl, that are based in East London, have really made this central to their mission. Great. Now I should go and talk to Richard Malone. <laughs> Another one he for my list. He is outspoken. He gave me a... I just wrote a piece about the one pound bikini when it was out, and he was like, it makes me sick. I've got a PDF. I'll send it to you. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Charities say, charities like Oxfam say we should be buying less and re repairing more. 
but repairing who knows how to repair anymore do you think that's the way forward maybe I think that's a brilliant idea um, I would really advise people against just chucking something away you can give it to a friend send it to a resale site give it to charity or yes mend it or customize it um, we should really be trying to shop what's already in our own wardrobes before we go out and always buy something new 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 do you think that uh, influencers or celebrities or even royalty could play a part in changing public opinion on this? I mean, Meghan Markle has definitely done something in this department, but Kate Middleton also. Yeah, I think that celebrities are. Hold on. I think that celebrities and influencers are, without doubt, a really powerful platform, but we don't necessarily want to be lectured by them. We like to see it in action. Uh, I actually do need some water, sorry. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I've just got some, there should be a bottle at the top of my bag. Okay. Thank Steve's you. Wiggling through your blinds. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> I mean, you should see my flat, God. I just saw a manuscript for a porn novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's written on recycled paper, though. <laughs> Oh yes, so tell me about tell me about your um, the Kate Middleton thing as well. That's really useful. Yeah, I don't think we want to be lectured by celebrities though. We like to see it in action, and I think Kate Middleton is a great ambassador because she's been she's taken the stigma out of re-wearing pieces. She recently customised a gown that she'd worn a few years ago, and I think that's a really powerful message. You don't always need more stuff. It is amazing, isn't it, that now because People just want to be on Instagram. They are ordering clothes online, being t photographing themselves, sticking them on Instagram, and then sending the clothes back. Some of those clothes can't be resold. We just seem to have got into this really absurd situation of wear things once. It's terrible. It's really awful. Um, I can't remember if I said this earlier. The, the, the golden rule is that we just need to stop buying less. And this idea that something new is always going to fix everything, that you always need something new is really gross. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and I would also suggest that nobody ever buys anything that they intend to wear once and then throw away. That is the big no-no. Even a wedding dress. <laughs> Even a wedding dress. You can customise that. Searches for resale wedding dresses are soaring. Excellent. Um, you have the... Or Sola de Castro from Fashion Revolution suggested that we use technology more. If you're really into Instagram, you can send your headshots to someone and they will basically put that onto a number of different outfits and you can just post them on Instagram, one after another after another. Nothing changes hands. You know, it's all digital, brilliant. Yeah, there's that. that. <laughs> you know what else you can do? You can rent clothes now. You can borrow from your friends. Also, that's free or it should be. Um, you know, there's plenty of ways to do it, but I also just think you do have to move away from that culture that we always just need something new. That's really problematic. Absolutely. So where, this is a big question, but where do you think we are heading in the future in terms of sustainability? Can we slow the tide of this terrible problem of pollution and just an, an un unsustainable industry? Fashion is by its nature an unsustainable industry but we can be taking steps however we have to make those steps now we can't sit back and wait for someone else to do it I think we have to change the whole conversation around it like I said moving on from this idea that you always have to have the latest newest thing that's really really problematic um, what else was I gonna say sorry um, Another thing that brands can do is they can make sustainability, if not sexy, then at least aspirational. And, you know, I think people are really demanding it now. And that really, I find, a galvanising message. Certainly Vivian Westwood has gone down that route, hasn't she? She's, she's really sort of banging the drum for that kind of sexiness around it and making it a theme of her shows, apart from anything else. Yeah, my sister used to work for Vivian Westwood. And she did all the environmental stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's between us. <coughs> uh, lots of protests. Yeah, I think that you have to have those Westwood type figures who are willing to say that this message needs to be heard. 
and now. <laughs> yeah, so a few mavericks, do you think? Yeah. So it was only a few months ago that the government threw out all of the Environmental Audit Committee recommendations. Um, Self-regulation by fashion retailers isn't working, is it? Mm, 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 I don't think it is, but I'm just thinking how to say that to you. It's sort of the speed at which they have to get on with it, really. I mean, there's lots of sort of announcements about things happening by 2025 or whatever, but it's all a bit slow. I'm just going through my high street knowledge. Mm. I feel bad, like I should have, I feel like I should be more prepped for you. <laughs> mm. Um, what, remind me the question again. So if um, self-regulation uh, by fashion retailers isn't working, where do we go from here? What else can we... Oh, I know what I'm going to say. Um, I think that customers have to vote with their pockets and their wallets because... It's sort of wallets, isn't it? Sorry. Da, 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 da. Um, I think customers have to vote with their wallets because that's the only thing that is really going to make those huge brands listen. As I said, just nodding to more sustainable practices isn't enough. It has to be a massive holistic endeavour on part of the brands. And Fashion Revolution in particular started a campaign that was to encourage curiosity called who, wear, you know, who made my clothes. So it's getting people to be really interested in where their, you know, anything comes from. How do you think we can do more of that, just to get awareness out there? I think that the, dis the dis no, no, no. I think that the desire and the demand to know more about where the clothes come from is already there, but, um, and I think that the next generation are already more engaged, um, I think social media is a really powerful tool for in, for encouraging that conversation. And magazines like yours can obviously help that getting that message out there. We're absolutely trying. We always make sure that we do a lot of stories on vintage, that we do stories on influencers re-wearing things that are already in their wardrobes. I was going to say about vintage. Do you think there's a do you think we could make vintage more sexy than it already you know, than it is? Because people there, there's two very different thoughts on that, isn't there? One, it's vintage, and two, it's secondhand. I don't want to go near it. Is there some way of making it a bit more kind of wearable, you know, sexy? Um, I would say to anyone that thinks that vintage means rummaging around in a musty old piles of unwanted stuff is so missing a trick. Vintage is so exciting. You can get some great finds there from across the spectrum. I am a big fan of shopping vintage. It's amazing what, what difference someone like Kate Moss made, just wearing the old, just a, you know, a slip that was vintage or something. Absolutely, and Megan and Amal have been wearing pieces from William Vintage, which is a very high-end um, vintage boutique in London that's recently teamed up with Matches Fashion. Shopping vintage is one of the most sustainable things that you can do. Shop new, but new old, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, now, is there anything that you think we've missed? I don't know, I just fit, you tell me, because no, I don't I feel, I feel a bit of blah, blah, blah. I think that's it. Um, is there anything else in terms of... Let me just see. In terms of celebs or people who could sort of change the game on this. I mean, you get to sort of small, <coughs> people doing things in a small way, like Rooney Mara for example, has got a vegan clothing line. But I think that's probably very, very niche. I'm wondering whether mm. there's anybody who's going to make more of a difference. I mean, you need someone like Kim Kardashian to start wearing vintage. And that would make she's, been wearing, she's been wearing vintage. Has she? She's been wearing loads of vintage. Oh, OK. I can put, say something about her Please as well. Do. Please do. Please do. Do you want me to just go back on vintage again yeah. in general and add uh, her in? Yeah, that would be great, yes. So you, what were you saying? How could we make uh, wearing, buying, wearing vintage more appealing generally i mean i'd say to anyone who isn't already shopping vintage you're missing a serious trick it doesn't mean rummaging through musty old piles of clothes it's really exciting it's an absolute treasure trove and definitely worth searching it out celebrities are really getting on the vintage message as well 
um, Amal and Amal Clooney and Meghan Markle have been wearing pieces from William Vintage in London, a really exclusive boutique that's also recently par partnered with Matches Fashion. And even Kim Kardashian, once seen as the kind of icon of the super fast trend, has been wearing a lot of vintage 90s uh, Versace and Jean-Paul Gaultier. And guess what? She's making it really, really desirable. Perfect. That's brilliant. OK, I think that's yeah. it. Think Are you, do done. you think you've got enough? I think so, yeah. I feel yeah. bad. I feel like I should have had more stats for you. No, don't worry. You sure? Is there an, anything else you need? No, the only other thing is if there's anything on the current situation and how bad it is, if you happen to know anything at all. But we've got the, you know, wastewater and all of that. Um, Debbie, are you doing something about Rana Plaza? And I was going to mention that in passing, but that's such a massive... That this is the problem, its, and I almost would want to say this, is it's such a huge issue. Yeah. Where do you even begin? Yeah, I know. I started with this subject, and then it just went... Oh, just this is it. So, when, so I, I know it doesn't look like it, but I really was prepping for today. Yeah. And it's like... And I've written pieces about it, and it's uh, it's endless. It is absolutely it's endless. It's absolutely endless, which I think puts people off because they think, where do I even start? Yeah. Well, guess what? Start with not using a plastic bag, then. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Start with the small things because yeah. that all begins to add up. Yes. Oh, that's a very good point. Are you still rolling, Steve? Yeah. I, I, I thought that was really good, but you were interrupting on time. Sorry. Again. Wait. Wait. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? What you okay. Did there with um. I think people get really turned off talking about it because it's such a massive, knotty issue. They don't even know where to begin. But guess what? Start with the small stuff, like don't use a plastic bag. All those, all those apparently tiny gestures will add up into something massive. Great. That wasn't as good, was no, it? No, that's it's fine. Got the point, We've got the point. Yeah. What did I say before? You were saying how it's such a massive issue, it's just so confusing. You started oh, confusing, we should say you that. You said you yeah. started looking at it and suddenly there's all these elements. That okay, just mm. well, I can do it again if you want. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. Um, I think people get really turned off talking about sustainability because it's such a massive, knotty, confusing issue. They don't even know where to begin. Um, even for me, writing about it, sometimes you could you could explore it forever. Um, and I think people... What do I say? I think people... And because it's such a huge issue, people don't know where to begin. And they, don't, they feel guilty, like, are they doing enough? Well, I'll tell you where to begin. Begin by doing something small. Stop using a plastic bag. Use a recyclable, um, a reusable cup. And like all those small gestures will eventually add into something big. Oh, I've thought something else. I can Keep do it. But um, I'll tell you where to begin. Start by uh, use it, reusing a plastic bag. You shouldn't use a plastic bag, should you? This is um, the crescendo of my. <laughs> I'll tell you where to begin. Start by not using a plastic bag, by using a reusable coffee cup. Or perhaps next time you want to buy something new for a one-off thing, don't. Just skip it and see what's already in your wardrobe. All those small gestures will add up into a big message eventually. And one day we won't be, you won't get the Daily Mail saying that punishing royals for wearing the same thing twice. I know, <laughs> but they'll still be talking about their pins, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> pouring her curves into <laughs> <laughs> that's the one lovely thank you laura thank you. that's brilliant that's all right